Yes, I regret the day I came up with them, I really do. Why? Why? Because it's ruined my life. And here, here is the real live candy man, the king of jelly beans, Mr. Jelly Belly. Mr. Jelly Belly. Mr. Jelly Belly. We'll be right back to visit with him. I was very happy as Mr. Jelly Belly. Uh, people would call me up for interviews, radio, TV, all kinds of things. And, and, and you know, it was, a, it was a good part to play. Wait, wait a little laughter dies. Irving Jelly Belly. Jelly is, Belly. is that a family name, Jelly no, Belly? No, You know, you really, that T-shirt, that, can you come in on this, guys? Because that logo is right at the right spot. Mm. You, you really do have one to chase, that's, don't yes, you? That's an A cup, I think. <laughs> It's what's all there. Your, what's your real name? David Klein. So people don't know who I am, basically, in the industry. I'm the best kept secret in the world. I was born in Syracuse, New York, and we came out here when I was three years old. I've been a California guy 58 years. I'm 61 right now. People say I still sound like I'm an Easterner that I never lost the uh, Eastern accent. But it only had three years chance to develop, but a lot of people say I sound like I'm, I'm from the East Coast. Perhaps my first memory of the Jelly Belly is seeing my dad on TV. I mean, I know that probably wasn't the first impression, but the first one I can remember. I also remember tons and tons of boxes coming straight from the factory. We had a room called the Bean Room, and I just remember the white boxes with the Jelly Belly logo that Kathy Fosselman had done. My mom insists that I learned my colors from the first five flavors of Jelly Belly, which I believe were coconut, green apple, very cherry, root beer, and mm, I can't remember what the other one was. My dad's had a lot of ideas over the years, and they've, they've all been brilliant, but it's just something about these guys, no, nothing like these guys. He always had to be the best, always striving to do something different, always looking for a new way to do things. At the young age of 18, I was in business with my uncle making a product called Big Dave's Popcorn, named after me. I would come here every day after going to UCLA, load up, took the back seat out of my car so I could put in more bags. And I took the bags to liquor stores and bars. And I was not old enough really to be allowed inside the bar because you gotta be 21 to get in. Dave worked his way through law school at UCLA, selling popcorn on campus. Somebody who did that to start with and then decided not to take the bar exam because that really wasn't what he wanted to do, I think is... <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. The first time I started to talk is with David. I was always very quiet, very genteel, very much a lady, and then he changed me. Out of self-preservation, I changed. You know, a lot of people think it would be fun to be a candy inventor, uh, but you know, it's grueling, thankless work. I mean, you're working in a, a windowless candy factory for 18, 20 hours a day, no air conditioning. And you're making painfully agonizing decisions like, you know, cinnamon or nutmeg, or sugar or, or corn syrup. You know, I wouldn't want to have to live with that kind of pressure. In life, you only need to be a genius for 15 seconds. This is America. If you come up with a good idea, you can run with that idea. Available now on iTunes.